Come paint clouds with me today, four different ways, something extra unique in there as well. And these techniques are great for beginners, or if you just want to practice something, get out of your little box if you're feeling a little bit unmotivated or un, you know, uninspired. So here are the materials I'll be using. You be flexible. It's okay if you don't have the exact same thing. If you're using a different kind of paper, uh, if you, you know, don't have a sponge, there's a little asterisk there because I have something unique, a little odd that we'll be using. So use what you have, grab some blues, get your paints all on your palette. And I've divided these into four little sections. We're not doing huge paintings. We're just going to keep it, you know, small and simple. First one up, gradient wet on dry. So we're going to first create a little background on this one. We're going to let it dry. So we're not going to finish this whole little bit. The clouds aren't even in it for the first bit. So just create a gradient by starting with a darker blue and then building all the way down to a lighter blue. You can even add a little white, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use a light blue. Brush side to side all the way off the edge of your canvas or paper or tape, whatever is there. Next, we're going to blend wet on wet. So don't take any breaks in here. You have to use it while it's wet. So first I'm just covering it. Notice how I'm brushing it on in kind of a random way. It doesn't have to be so sweeping across the whole canvas. I'm just kind of adding the color in, just kind of a middle deep tone. And then we're adding in some lighter tones. I'm gonna create this kind of variation in the background and it's going to be something kind of I would imagine it to be like a windy day kind of sky, okay? So it's good to imagine, like, what am I actually painting here? Not just something random, but have some idea. So I'm using a flat brush and now I'm moving over to kind of this rounded oval uh, mop brush and I'm adding in my white while my background color is still wet. That is key for the wet on wet. If you've let it dry, we're not doing wet on wet anymore. <laughs> so as I'm adding the white, you're gonna notice that it's gonna blend in with that background. That's why I wanted to go with slightly darker blues and not my light blue, then adding white, then it just would not really show up as well. So I'm gonna kind of go back and forth between a few brushes. I'm using a flat brush, I'm using that rounded oval mop brush, and we're gonna bring in a fan brush. A fan brush is fantastic for this wet on wet. You're gonna see why in a minute. So right now I'm kind of working on the shape, the location of my clouds, adding in more white, getting that paint in there, working quickly, not taking breaks. Don't take your little break right now. Stay here. <laughs> so you can see I'm sweeping very lightly, very lightly. We're not hammering down, we're sweeping. And this is just a soft, light, airy feel. And I want you to use that brush very lightly when I'm going side to side, I've sped it up a little bit, but when I'm sweeping side to side, it's going to feather it. So imagine it's like a feather. You're not smushing it. It's just keeping it light. That's that's how it should be used very lightly. And it's blending into that background just a little bit. And I'm focusing the energy on the bottom part of my cloud where I want it to kind of fade more. And then lightly tapping to blend the top part too just as needed. Just see where, you know, something's kind of looking a little jarring, feather it out a little bit. I'm going to take that other brush, doesn't have to be this exact brush at all, and apply some more white. So we have some highlights. I want those clouds to kind of pull forward and have a lot of fun with it. So just add a little bit and then go back and forth. I'm holding one brush, holding the other. If you've, if you're stopping one brush for a long time, wash it. You do have time to wash it. This isn't, you know, a sprint. Um, <laughs> I know I said, no, don't take any breaks, but if you need to wash the brush, you've got your water jars there, wash your brush, put it aside. And then maybe if you need it again, hey, it's clean. It's all good. So just feathering out, you see I'm going back and forth with both brushes till I get the desired outlook that I want. Okay, this next one, it's a sponge or, okay, don't judge, but this is, a clump of hair. <laughs> However, it's very economical. I know it's a little strange, but it's going to create some really cool textures. So if you don't have a sponge, well, you know, if you have really long hair and you know, hair, hairs come out, you know, you're putting that in the garbage. So might as well just grab some of it, you know, knot it up together a little bit and use it as a tool. Why not give it a go? 
If you think I'm crazy, that's all right. It's okay. It's okay to be a bit crazy. And you know what? It works. Look at this texture it's creating and you can move it around to kind of change the shape because when you're using something like a sponge, sometimes it can look too predictable, the markings, if you don't maneuver the sponge enough while you're making your little stamping marks. So keep that in mind when you're working with a sponge or clump of hair. <laughs> I know, I know, it's, it's a little weird. I agree it's a bit weird, but at the same time, why? Why is it weird? It really shouldn't be. I mean, look at how neat it is. It's creating this almost pointillism type of look, very textured you know, what works for whatever outlook you're going for. This next one is our squeegee pull. And I had so much fun doing a squeegee video last time. Check out my squeegee video if you want to play more with different colors and everything. This one, I, and I took somebody's advice, put it on the outside of the tape. Now it depends on the look you want, but I want to cover the whole background. So that works for what I want. So have an extra paper or something that you can take the extra excess paint off onto. So pulling across this was so cool. I was really cool, really pleased with the outcome on this one. Wipe it off and then go again or use a squeegee that is the length of the whole canvas and go across just once, but have something to put that onto because I had a lot of excess, probably put way too much paint, <laughs> uh, blotted on there. So I really liked that one. Now that our background for the gradient is dry, we're gonna take some white and make some cute puffy clouds. This is when we say clouds, this is probably the most, you know, common thought that we have when it comes to clouds. And it's, you know, seen in cartoon, it's almost cartoony, <laughs> the cumulus type of cloud, if, that, if I got that correct. So I'm just taking a small brush and gathering some paint into the different areas, starting with kind of bigger clouds at the top and then some smaller ones to kind of give me that distance, that feel of depth. And then going back and forth again with my fan brush to kind of blend out at the base to make it look more realistic because I don't really want it to look too cartoony. Hey, some clouds really do look like that. Once it's dry, pull the tape off and voila, we have our four different techniques Give them a try. Let me know what you think. Which one is your favorite? Which one would you actually use in your artwork? Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.